Hey dudes, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade corn tortillas. I've gotten a lot of requests for these. I showed you all how to make wheat flour tortillas a while back whenever we released the breakfast taco book. And while corn tortillas are not really traditional on Austin breakfast tacos, sometimes you will see them, especially if people are gluten intolerant. And if you've never had a homemade corn tortilla, you are seriously in for a treat. They're so much better, they're infinitely better than anything that you can buy at a store, and they're super easy. You only need three ingredients for these. One of these might be kind of hard to find where you, wherever you live, but salt, water, and then the masa flour, masa harina. Um, this is made by soaking dry corn in a solution of lime water, and that's not, I don't mean like the fruit, it's a calcium hydroxide, which is a really strong alkalizing agent, and it sloughs off the outer hull of the corn, and then that interior meaty part is ground up to make the masa dough. And sometimes you can find that already made, sort of like a big, you know, probably like a two pound bag of sort of a Play-Doh looking substance. When that is dried and then sort of like repulverized, then you're in, you end up with this. So it's basically a flour that's already been cooked, if that makes sense. It's been cooked by the, the lime. That's what we're gonna use today. If you can find the already prepared masa dough, you can use that. Um, I've got about a cup here. This is just some salt. I like to weigh masa because it can absorb water from the humidity in the air and stuff, and that will affect how much water you need to add. So for about four ounces of masa, which is 28 times four grams, which is 112, I don't know. Um, we're gonna probably use about two thirds of a cup of warm water, and this is just warm to the touch. But I like to start out with just a little bit at first, like maybe half a cup, and start mixing it up. And you'll get the hang of this. You'll start to just sort of know, it's like pie crust where you just have to do it a few times and then you'll know what the right um, consistency is. But it's really easy to work with. Corn is naturally gluten-free, so this is a great thing for people that have gluten sensitivities. If you actually had like full-on celiacs or something, you'd probably want to get some kind of like special approved masa that hasn't ever touched anything that has ever touched wheat. But for regular gluten sensitivity, I think this is probably fine. So then just kind of get your hands in there so you can start to feel how it's coming together. And what we're looking for is something that obviously holds together into a ball but isn't sticky. If it, starts, if it sticks when you start to press it out, that means it's a little bit too wet. And if it sticks to your hands a lot, it's a little bit too wet. I think I might have overdone my water, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. But the great thing is, because there's no gluten in this, you don't have to worry about overworking it like you do with a pie crust. It's never gonna get tough. So you can just play with it all day long. Just play with yourself and your masa dough all day. Okay. See how it holds together, but it's not sticking to my hands. A lot of traditional Mexican cooks will actually pat them out by hand, but that takes probably a good decade of practice and I'm not that old. Just kidding, I totally am. But I have a tortilla press and I'm gonna use that. Okay, so this is a metal tortilla press. This is actually a pretty bad designed one because it doesn't open all the way and then it can very easily fall shut and slam your finger, which has happened to me only once, I'm happy to say, but it hurt like the Dickens. So you can use this, you can use one that's made out of wood, whatever you can find. And I'm gonna line it with some saran wrap, like so. Can you see that? And then I just wanna pinch off balls of dough, about the size of a golf ball, which will give you a four to five inch size tortilla, which is kind of small. It's definitely smaller than the ones you get in the store, but it's a good size for little tacos and stuff. It's fun. So put your little ball down there and close that. And then this is where you're, your little power lever, it's a very simple machine, and just squeeze it. You can make them as thick or as thin as you want, but this seems good to me. And see, if it had stuck to the plastic, I would just pull it off and put it back in here and add a little bit more of the dry masa. But it didn't stick, so that means we're looking good. And I've got my hot skillet over here. I'm just gonna throw it right in the center. No oil, no grease, nothing like that. And just let it cook for, I don't know, a minute or so, and then we'll flip it and let it cook another 30 seconds. If you don't have a press, you can totally do it without one and without using your hands manually because gross, right? I hate doing stuff with my hands. Uh, we just still wanna use the plastic. 
Make your little ball. Fold it over like so. And then get a pot. I know you got one of these. Just sort of mash it out evenly. There we go. It's kind of a baby one. This one will be for banjo. All right, turning back over here. Pay attention. So it's starting to bubble up a little bit and the edges start to like curl up. And these are traditionally done on more like a griddle, like a kamal flat thing, but I don't actually have one of those. So I use a cast iron skillet, but I use that for everything. So I guess that's not really very special. All right, see this one starting to puff up a little bit. It's totally okay. It's a little inflado. That's all right. And then I've got my little tortilla warmer here, which you can buy these, or if you want to just wrap them up in a clean tea towel, that's totally fine too. Keep them wrapped up in there. Um, and once you have you know, your 12 tortillas or eight tortillas made or whatever, then you can wrap that whole deal in foil and put it in the oven at like 150, 200 Fahrenheit, and just they'll stay warm and fresh and delicious in there for quite a while. Here we go. Okay, tortillas are done. I forgot to mention that you should still wrap them in a cloth just to absorb any condensation and keep them from getting soggy. But anyway, I'll just show you how awesome and tender and pliable these are compared to something you might buy at the store. So I'm like, I'm stretching it. It's like an elastic rubber band almost here. So of course you could make a taco or you could spread it with butter and sprinkle it with some salt or you could just put a little bit of hot sauce on it like I'm about to do and enjoy the wonderful natural corny flavor. Mm-hmm. That's a great snack. It's like you're actually chewing something because it's actually like real food. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the recipe or any comments about how I screwed it all up and I should just stick to being a white person, please leave them below and I'll respond as cheerfully as possible. Thanks again and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.